Hey, what is happening, Miami Dolphins fans? Welcome back to the Fins Up Network. It's Ben Morgan, and it is week five, which means it is Jets week, everyone's favorite week. It's one of the teams that we've had a lot of success against recently. I think we've won the last four against the Jets, so always looking forward to Jets week. The rivalry. Come on, Jets fans. Let's hear your comments as well. But it's stock up, stock down for your Miami Dolphins leading up to week five against the Jets. But real quick, I got to give a shout out to some viewers who, because last week we had a weird week having the Thursday game. I didn't get to do my stock up, stock down for week four. But there were still some viewers that hit me up in the comments with their stock up, stock down nomination. So got to give a shout out to those who were able to provide that, even given the fact that I didn't provide that. So. Man, hats off to you guys. But let's do some stock up, stock downs. As always, drop your nominations in the comments below and let's get started. Let's go right away with Tyreek Hill. Leading the NFL in wide receiver yards, despite the fact that, oh man, Tyreek's going to Miami. I don't think he can survive with Tua. He doesn't have the arm for it. Or this guy can't be getting it done without Patrick Mahomes. Well, I think we've put that to bed because a lot of the numbers, yes, have come with Tua and those two were having great chemistry right away. But man, Teddy Bridgewater plays the majority of that game on Thursday and Tyreek still puts up 10 receptions for 160 yards. And I did want to single out a tweet that I saw. I think it was ESPN that put it out. But essentially summarizing it, Tua is the first player with multiple 10 catch 150 yard receiving games in his first four games in a season since himself. He did it last year with the Chiefs as well. He's the only player in NFL history to do this in multiple seasons, let alone consecutive seasons. Now we got to keep that momentum going because in my opinion, the play calling is going to get a little bit more conservative with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback for at least week five. We'll see what happens after that. But at some point in time, it's going to be critical. Teddy's going to be called upon to make a play. You know he's going to have to take a shot downfield. You know he's going to need a big third down conversion or a red zone conversion. And who better to go to than the NFL's leading wide receiver? That is Tyreek Hill. So I got Tyreek Hill as a stock up. And I do want to give a quick disclaimer before I go into my next one because we're coming off of a loss. I'm going to have more stock downs this week than stock up. Trust me, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom by any means here. I just think there's some things that I want to point out in today's video that we need to improve on. And this next one is kind of one of those examples because it's Jalen Waddle. And honestly, this is me being overly hard on a player that has set such an incredibly high bar for himself that I'm going to nitpick some miscommunication issues that he's had and some drop issues that he's had. Because mind you, he's already he's already proven to us at such a high level. And he's four weeks into his second NFL season. And really, my, my gripe with Jalen Waddle, a lot of it's the drops. I mean, we saw one last week against Cincinnati. He had a miscommunication where he was run blocking on a, on a quick slant. Nearly cost the Dolphins the game with the drop on that quick slant that he had in the Baltimore game right before we scored the touchdown, I believe, that tied it. But there's just been a couple of things, and you'll notice if you watch Jalen Waddle, if there's one thing that you're going to pick apart in this game, it's that he'll he'll let the body come, he'll let the ball come to his body, and that's not always what you want to see from a wide receiver. And even sometimes when he is catching it with his hands, it's just not the cleanest thing in the world. So if he could improve on that, trust me, the guy has got so many skills that are already there. He already has so many of the nuances of the position that typical second-year players don't have. The speed is, you can't teach that. That's unmatched. You've got the speed. You've got the run after the catch. You've got the route running. You've got that short area quickness. This guy, paired with Tyreek, if you get to a healthy, and when these guys get even more used to the Mike McDaniel system, the sky is the limit for these guys. So like I said, I'm being hard on Jalen Waddle this week. But that's because the bar is set so damn high for himself. Let's go and do another stock down. And that's Chase Edmonds. Man, that touchdown he should have had on the opening drive against Cincinnati. A beautiful drive. He had a really nice catch to even get down that far. And then Tua just monies it to him right in the hands. And he drops it. 
And then he proceeds throughout the game to get outrushed 15 to 5 by Raheem Mostert. So you could actually give a little bit of a stock up to Raheem Mostert because going into this season, it was a running back by committee. And I still think it's going to be a running back by committee. But whereas Edmonds was kind of like the 1A to Mostert being the 1B, after last week, you got to wonder if those roles are maybe starting to reverse a little bit. So that is definitely something to keep an eye on. The running back usage, the snap distribution, keep an eye on that week five against the Jets. Let's go down to another stock down. And this is another one that I'm being hard on because of the fact that once again, the bar is set so high. But Xavier Howard is that player that we just got so used to as Dolphins fans being like, okay, whoever he is guarding on a certain play, that player's out. Like maybe, maybe he'll give up a couple of completions here and there, but it's stuff that you can live with. It's the underneath stuff. It's never usually the huge plays. But two times in the last three weeks, he gave up the 75-yarder to Bateman against Baltimore, and then he gave up the long touchdown down the sideline to T. Higgins. It's just simply that those are plays that we're not used to seeing from a guy like Xavier Howard. However, and I know what you're probably thinking right now, it's like he's got some legit excuses working for him, and he does. He absolutely does. A groin injury, a groin injury is going to be difficult for anyone, but especially a cornerback that you're asking to man up on somebody. There were NFL players, both present and former cornerbacks, saying what Xavier Howard was asked to do against Cincinnati is one of the most difficult things that you can do in football. And that's essentially saying you got this guy, you're locking him down. And it's not that it's just any 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 average guy off the street either. It's T. Higgins. It was T. Higgins, who's a wide receiver one for most teams that don't have a guy like Jamar Chase on the other side. So Miami was assigning a cornerback and then multiple defenders to essentially bracket chase. And they did a relatively good job taking him away. And then it's like, hey, Howard, there's Higgins on the other side. Why don't you go ahead and just try to shut him down? So there's a lot of things that were going against Xavier Howard in this particular situation. But like I said, get healthy, get some improvement on those back-breaking plays, those deep balls that we're not used to seeing him really give up, get back to those interceptions, and we will go stock all the way back up on Xavier Howard. This next player, I wanted to end with this player, and I labeled it stock in limbo, and that's Byron Jones because – I'm going to release this Wednesday afternoon, but that means I've got to record it before then. So there is a chance that we already have the news on Byron Jones, but in case we don't, I'm going to play a little bit of both sides. But with, through week four, that means Byron Jones is eligible to come off the PUP list. Mike McDaniel said, hopefully midweek. So we're thinking Wednesday, Thursday, we should have an answer as to whether or not he's coming off the PUP list. But where it could be stocked down, is look back to the offseason. All offseason, it was Byron Jones is on track. He'll be healthy. He'll be ready for week one. Well, if he doesn't come off PUP, either Wednesday or Thursday, we're in week five and he's still not off the list. And granted, he could come off the next week and everything would be just fine. But I have been a proponent of this Dolphin Zero Blitz works when you have two shutdown, lockdown cornerbacks playing on the boundary. And guess what? The zero blitz hasn't been near effective this year as what we saw it being last year. And that's because we had Howard and Jones. Now Howard's nicked up and Jones hasn't seen the field yet. So stock in limbo and it can be stock up if he gets activated and if he can if he can play right away against the Jets or maybe it takes him into week six because we're going to need someone if Byron or if uh, Xavier Howard, if that groin continues to impact him, we're going to need another player that's going to have to step up along with Cater Cole, who has been doing a great job. Nick Needham's been getting some pass breakups here and there, but he really hasn't even performed to his 2021 levels yet. So we'll kind of see how that has to end up playing out. But those are the ones that I have for this week, Miami Dolphins fans. Like I said, Drop your stock up, stock down nominations in the comments below, and I will be back throughout the week. Like I said, this one's dropping Wednesday. On Thursday, I will have my three keys to victory against the Jets. And on Saturday morning, I will have my final preview and prediction. So that is my time today, Miami Dolphins fans. 
And until next time, fins up.